This week on the Journal Editorial Report, fighting intensifies in eastern Ukraine. Two more fighter jets shot out of the sky. Putin holds firm. The White House talks new sanctions. So what does it all mean for the future of U.S.-Russia relations? Plus, the debate is on. Texas Governor Rick Perry and Kentucky Senator Rand Paul square off on foreign policy. If this is round one, who's left standing in 2016? And lost and now found, maybe, the IRS chief says tapes that could contain Lois Lerner's emails are now in the hands of investigators. So what's on them? And will officials finally fess up? Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. The Russian-backed rebels accused of killing 298 innocent people on a commercial airliner are not backing down. The separatists say they shot two Ukrainian fighter jets out of the sky Wednesday, not far from where the doomed Malaysia Airlines jet went down. Russian President Vladimir Putin is promising help but says there are limits. Here at home, President Obama is taking a lot of heat for not being tough enough. So is Putin playing us? Wall Street Journal Deputy Editor Dan Henninger and editorial board member Matt Kaminsky join me with more. So Matt, a lot of people hoped, I'm not saying mm. they expected it, but they hoped that the Malaysia Airlines shoot down might stop the war in Ukraine. It hasn't worked out that way. No, I mean, it was a very big event for us. For, for the world that was really forced to wake up to the conflict. But unfortunately, it was actually not that big of an event um, and didn't really change the calculus either for the Ukrainians who are trying to defeat essentially foreign troops uh, on, their soil. on their soil and trying to defend their country against Russia, nor did it change Putin's calculus. Why wouldn't it change Putin's calculus? He's now been exposed in most of the world. You saw the headlines in the London tabloids around the world, essentially putting the burden on, the blame on Putin. Why hasn't he shifted his calculus? Because I think something important happened earlier this month uh, in the weeks before the shootdown, when both we and the Europeans threatened sanctions and then didn't move to impose sanctions on Putin. Putin didn't think we were serious, but Putin also saw the Ukrainian government, the, the Ukrainian military, doing a lot better to defeat the rebels. So Putin decided in early July to send far more sophisticated weapons, right. including, including the, the surface, exactly, uh, but tanks. Um, he's been shelling Ukrainian territory from Russia for weeks, which the U.S. has finally come out and uh, stated as fact this week that we have also picked this up. And so he's sending he's heavy weapons now since the airliner shutdown, shoot down over the border. Throughout, yes, exactly. Nothing stopped. The, the flow opens kept going. But the important thing for Putin, I think, to realize is that Putin has a choice. He is, he cannot, I think he has a choice. Will he let these rebels lose? or will he do everything to make them succeed? But now he has to do a lot more because the Ukrainian military is getting its act together. Well, I think we should keep in goal that <clears throat> Vladimir Putin does have a strategic goal here. What is it, Dan? It's to absorb Ukraine towards the, uh, the Russian sphere. Pull it back and make sure it doesn't join the West. Make sure it doesn't join the West. And this is something Russian leaders have tried to do for, you know, virtually 60 years. So he has a goal and he's pursuing it. And I think he understands that the West at this point is not going to push back against him. We have gone back many times on this program to Obama's Syrian red line, where he told Bashar Assad that if they didn't stop using chemicals, and then he pulled back from that. This week on Monday, he stood in the White House lawn and, and said that if Vladimir Putin did not understand that these separatists were, po this is after the shootdown. Right, sure. After the shootdown, Holding the him Malaysian responsible. Airline. Holding them responsible, he said, if they did not control these separatists who were now a threat to the broader world community, as Obama put it, there will be cost. This was another red line, and Putin has already had experience with those I want to go lines. back to what Putin is doing in Russia and saying in Russia, the Kremlin media, because it's really a, an alternative universe from what we're reading and what the rest of the world is reading. They're blaming Ukraine and they're blaming the United States for shooting down the jet. Right, they're raising all kinds of alternative theories. One of them is that they were aiming for Putin's plane that was coming back from, from Latin America that was nearby, that it may have been uh, Ukrainian fighters who are shooting jets out of their own airspace for reasons that are unclear. But the important thing to realize here that Putin has boxed himself in in Russia itself. He has told a completely alternative uh, version of 
essentially global reality of what's happening for, in for, Ukraine. For years. Uh, four years, but especially since the Ukrainian revolution was such a humiliation for him. His crony was toppled in February, a, a mass movement for freedom, for democracy. You know, these are Ukrainians who did it on their own. The West didn't really help in any way. So Putin's trying to explain it. These are fascists. These are people who hate right. Russians. But Matt, by, for, all, by all evidence, the Russian population is buying it. Because they, the intelligentsia is signing on to it. Well, a lot of them are actually leaving Russia, but the people who are still in Russia um, do live in a, in a very closed space. They don't have access to other you know, sources of information. But when you lie to your own people so systematically, that's how you can take a country to war, because you yeah. back yourself into a corner and you end up having to strike out at, at the world. Now, Dan, I, was, I talked to a senator this week who went to the White House and said the White House was telling him, we're really upset with the Europeans, the Western Europeans. They're doing nothing about Putin as if they're the people who are supposed to lead in resisting Putin. What do you think of that? Well, uh, I think it is feckless. The, the Europeans the are Europeans not... The Europeans are feckless. Well, I think both the White House and the... No, the Europeans are simply not going to lead. They're, Everyone, they're Europeans. Look, no, <laughs> Germany. Germany, after two world wars, is simply never going to take the initiative. You talk to Germans and they will tell you there is no possibility that Germany is going to lead in a situation right, that like might this. lead to more war. The French. The French are selling a Mistral-class warship to Russia. Unbelievable. And Hollande says he will not back down on that. So you have a mess over there. The only way anything is going to happen is if the United States, if Barack Obama sends his Secretary of State, instead of sending him to Gaza, sends him to Brussels and comes with a plan to impose sanctions on Russia. But says unless the U.S. leads, it is not going to happen. The Ukrainian says this is a part of a strategy to isolate Putin, right. raise the costs economically, and really put the pressure on. Okay, gentlemen, we got to go. Thank you. I get the last word this week. When we come back, a foreign policy fight on both sides of the political aisle. Could 2016 be on the line?